Hi boys and girls, welcome back to the Parsha studio. Parsha's Mishpatim contains many mitzvahs, 53 to be exact. One of them is the mitzvah of Bikurim, bringing the first fruits to the Beis HaMikdash, which were usually brought in a basket. Today we are going to make our very own Bikurim basket out of challah. Here are the supplies that we will need. A mixing bowl and spoon, measuring cups and spoons, a medium-sized metal bowl, foil, and lastly parchment paper and a baking sheet. These are the ingredients we'll need. Flour, sugar, oil, yeast and salt, eggs, sesame seeds or a topping of your choice, and water. Let's begin. Preheat the oven to 400 degrees. Then let's dive into making the dough. Measure two cups of warm water and five teaspoons of yeast into the mixing bowl. Add a half a cup of sugar, mix it, and let it stand for two minutes until it starts foaming. Visualize yourself in Eretz Yisrael in the times of the Beis HaMikdash. Imagine you want to grow a big, beautiful pomegranate tree because this is one of the seven special fruits of Eretz Yisrael from which Bikurim can be brought. You buy a small pomegranate shrub and you get to work. You choose a sunny spot, dig a large hole in the ground, plant the shrub inside and fill the hole with soil. Measure out a half a cup of oil and two teaspoons of salt and add them to the mixture. Crack two eggs, Check to make sure there are no blood spots and add them to the bowl. Mix it all up with a wooden spoon. Then begin to add the flour, one or two cups at a time for a total of six and a half to eight and a half cups. After each addition of flour, mix the dough until the flour is fully blended in. Back to our pomegranate tree. You water the baby tree each day and sometimes give it special plant food called fertilizer. As it begins to grow bigger, you prune off the dead leaves and branches. Finally, after a long, long time, you notice the very first small pomegranate fruit begin to develop. You are so excited! You quickly tie a red string around the fruit so that you will be sure to know which fruit it is for Bikurim, the first fruit given to Hashem from the produce that you worked so hard to grow. Once it becomes too thick for mixing with the spoon, use your hands to knead. Do make sure you've washed your hands though. That's a good thing to remember to do before the start of any baking activity. Keep kneading, turning the dough over often until it is smooth, elastic, and a bit tacky. Oil the dough a little bit, then cover it and let it rise until it doubles in size, which should take around an hour. Once the dough has risen, form about 12 golf-sized balls. Roll each of them into a long, skinny rope. So why do we give the first fruits to Hashem? When we grow fruits and vegetables for ourselves, sometimes we can forget who is behind it all, who brings the sunshine, who grows our seeds, and who makes the rainfall. Although we certainly have to put in effort and hard work, it is Hashem who has provided us with all the raw materials, from the seeds to the soil, as well as the sunlight and the rainfall. Hashem is also the one who has given us the strength and the ability to do it all. Although actual Bikurim can only be brought in Eretz Yisrael and at the time when the Beis HaMikdash is standing, there is still an important lesson we can learn from it even today. This mitzvah reminds us that the food we grow, the houses we build, the people we help, or anything we do is only possible because of what Hashem gives us. Nothing is purely from ourselves. We always have to remember to thank Hashem for everything we have and for all that we have been able to accomplish. Can you think of something that you have achieved that you can thank Hashem for? Next, lay six of the ropes horizontally on a clean surface. Weave the other six ropes vertically through the horizontal ropes. Braid one rope at a time. Start in the middle, weaving over and under, over and under. Do the same for each rope, but make it a pattern. If you started by weaving the first rope over, make sure to begin by weaving the rope next to it, first under, and so on for all the ropes. Once the weaving is complete, oil the bottom surface of the medium-sized metal bowl. Then place it in the middle of the braided dough. Flip the bowl upside down so that the dough is on top. Make sure the braided dough spreads evenly across the bowl. Pull it to whichever side of the bowl you see it is necessary. Twist the ropes a bit so that they don't come apart. Lay the upside down bowl with the woven challah into a baking tray. Or a thick piece of foil can suffice if that's what you have. Crack another egg into a cup making sure it has no blood spots. Beat the egg, then use a pastry brush or a similar utensil to gently coat the challah. This will cause the challah to look shiny and beautiful once it's baked. Sprinkle your woven challah basket with sesame seeds or whichever topping you choose. Meanwhile, form the remaining dough into small rolls. You can use one of the techniques you see here or you can form them however you'd like. Once you've formed the remaining dough, 
Place the rolls on a baking tray. Use what is left of the beaten egg to gently brush the top of the challah rolls. Then sprinkle them with sesame seeds or whichever topping you chose. Bake all of the challah for about 15 minutes at 400 degrees. Then lower the temperature to 350 and bake for an additional 15 minutes until they look golden. Once they are ready, let them cool. Then carefully lift the challah basket off of the bowl. Place the buns inside and you're all set. Enjoy your challah, be current basket, and we'll see you next week.